Welcome to the first ever episode of Big Content, hosted by Mr. Jack Settleman. I'm Nick Ercolano, and we're here to uh, talk about an expose piece of big media. Basically, we're both full-time content creators. We've both been through the ringer, for better or worse. And we're here to talk about the process of not only becoming a full-time content creator, but I guess the ups and downs that you deal with, mental, physical, sponsors, brands, monetization, everything in between, and disperse some knowledge about how not to go about it, basically. And as Jack said before the episode started, which we might have caught on camera, fuck, fuck big me. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of good. We did. <laughs> good. Uh, yeah, so I think the first episode, we're just going to kind of kick it off and introduce ourselves, talk about what we've done up to this point, like where we're at right now. And a lot of our conversations will revolve around the creator economy, um, why we think it's so powerful, why we think it's the future of just like business in general going forward and different things like that. And as the episodes kind of evolve, we're going to do this every single week. Um, we'll probably, we're going to film them on Wednesday. I'm not actually sure when they're going to go live, but we'll keep you all updated. We have, we have the discord link down below. Obviously this is the YouTube channel, but me and him will both be probably tweeting about it personally. So you'll be able to find it anywhere that we, um, that we're on the socials. So Mr. Jack, uh, I think this is going to be a very cool playoff with each other. Like obviously we've gotten to know each other over the last like year or two and we're very different in terms of like how we've come up thus far. Like our personalities are very similar. I think we get along really well, but I feel like what I've done is, is very, um, focused on like one or two things and you have a whole lot of things going on. And I don't know if that's something that, uh, l l let's kind of like, I guess l let's start from the beginning. Cause you came up on Snapchat, like that's how you built your platform, Snapback Sports. We came up through YouTube and now TikTok and stuff like that. So how about you give like a quick background of, um, you know, what made you get started, why you wanted to get started and how you did? Well, I want to say the first thing of why I want to do this podcast and the future of the creator economy is I think everyone's going to be a creator in the future. And it's been like that forever. Like people have been creators in their own right. It's just now people are doing it on video, they're writing blogs, but like bloggers were the original creators and everyone's going to be a creator in their field for the most part. So I think instilling some of this knowledge that we've learned from experiences and helping others get to that place because a lot of people are going to want to be creators. It's the new hot thing. It was influencer, then it was YouTuber, and now it's creator. But I think it's also going to be a need to be a creator. That's what's going to get you hired if you want to work at certain jobs. Like companies are already hiring creators. Like your employees are creators. Right. Like as they're, well. they're not, but they are. It's like right. you have to be some sort of a creator in order to like get ahead now. I also think like companies in a whole are more media companies than they yeah. are, like whatever they are. And that's something that I feel like I've talked about a while, uh, for a while is like you're a media company first, you're a fucking accounting firm second, yeah. right? Like the, the accounting firms are probably get the most money now are the ones who make YouTube videos about like how to file your taxes, five mistakes not to make on your yeah. tax returns this year or whatever. People see those and they're like, oh, these dudes are knowledgeable. They're experts in their field. Let me reach out to them. That's like client, you know, that's how you bring the clients in. And I feel like that's really just reverse engineering it all. Making content is how you like get to the end goal. Yeah. So you said I started on Snapchat, my company Snapback Sports. I was actually my sophomore year at UT Austin. We had started an e-com site and we were advertising through social media. I was paying these 14 year old kids via kick messenger thousands of dollars. And I was making $2 margins on sports design. So I was like, fuck that. Like, what, I what make, were you selling? You, okay, like, so you sports started design. Like if you remember the original phone case was like, they would use the Apple logo and you'd put like LeBron dunking it, like an outline of him. And we would just sell them through the biggest pages. So I was like, I want to start my own thing. And at the time, you know, I grew up on Sports Center. I'd watch it two hours a day, highlights, all that stuff. But you could feel that there was a shift to social, but also a shift to like what made ESPN popular were the people behind it, Stuart Scott and SVP and stuff like that. So I had no interest in ever being on camera. It kind of came out of a need. I think your story is very different. Like you wanted to be in content. I kind of thought like same as you said reverse engineer this thing and see what people care about so that's we started building on snap i you know post a hundred times a day for a hundred straight days and the algorithm then you could actually grow on snap you can't today we can dive into all the platforms later but that was the original and like you said now five years later doing a million different things yeah like honestly understatement every yeah. time i fucking go onto your twitter it's <laughs> like yeah we signed with fucking msg yeah, we signed with this yeah. company i'm yeah. starting a food company yeah it's really well i think that i mean that's another thing we'll talk 
talk about is, you know, I always use the Paul Brothers as a great example, Prime, and then Better. Those are two creator-focused businesses. We're trying to do that while we have the attention, but you also got to stay focused. So sometimes we do need to reel it in. Um, but that, yeah. That's like the biggest conversation I feel like you and me are going to have is that we... I mean, I'm not focused all the time, but I try to stay very focused yeah. on like very few things that I dive deep into. And I see you out there like doing a million things. And I'm like, how, how does this motherfucker stay focused? <laughs> yeah. Is it like, let me, I, I feel like we got to dive a little bit more into what exactly you are working on right now. So you have your brand Snapback Sports. That's for the most part. Like that's a content, a that's company. a media company. Yeah, it's a media company. Right. Sports media company. Okay, and then from that, you've done, you've you've kind of branched off. And I mean, you're an individual content creator. Yep. Um, you have Snapback Kitchen, mm -hmm. which is like Mr. Beast, pretty much. But you guys are ha have your own menu through that. What, what other, what would you say are like the five or six like pillars you have in your life right now, pretty much? So I would say sports okay. media company first. Then we have our Snap Studio. So a lot of people probably don't know, but you go on the right side of the page. It's like mini Netflix. And we've got 10 shows that are we're either producing, I'm um, talent for it, we're filming it, editing. This is on Snap. This uh, is Snapchat. on Snap, which is separate from our main accounts, which we have Snapback Sports, Snapback College, or Snapback University, and Snapback Bet. So we're doing all different stuff there. Snapback Kitchen was an extension of that, so like Mr. Beast Burger, except we're doing chicken tenders and mac and cheese. Uh, and then, like, I've got a partnership with MSG doing betting content. We did, uh, we're doing Snapback Mondays, we're going to every Monday night football game. So we are doing it, we're doing a shit ton and our team we have hired up we're now four or five people um but what i you know you play a lot in the fantasy football space and we'll talk about ike's lunch later <laughs> But I say, like, Snapback wants to work in the next gen of sports fans. So that's – it's no longer just watching a three-hour game and going home listening to post game. It's like, what did the player wear to the game? What did they tweet about? The culture around it. So food is a huge part of that. Drinking is a huge part of that. College is a huge part of that. So we're just doing all the touch points of what a sports fan today is. So it seems like we're doing, like, these things that don't make a lot of sense. But they, you know, people eat food hungover on Sunday, watch mm -hmm. Red Zone. We want you to think I'm ordering Snapback Kitchen. Yeah, it's a smart way to approach it. Um, I feel like it'll basically reel in everyone that's like your age and underneath. And that's already playing to your audience, obviously, yeah. on Snap. Yeah, so you have like all these things going on. And is that, I know from our point of view, you know, we get, we have a lot of ideas like all the time. There are always things I want to fucking execute on. And it feels like, okay, I get this idea. And it's like, oh no, if I don't, there's a window of opportunity to do it within the next 45 fucking seconds. If I don't do it right now, that's sports, that is sports. Yeah. And it feels like when you're running a business, it's, it's kind of similar, but the problem with that is like all of these different executions take a very long time in order to like plan out and then properly execute right now for you. Is this like a phase of, not a phase, but like, is this, I guess, sort of a phase of throwing a bunch of shit against the wall and like seeing what sticks and becomes like the foundation of, because, you know, people in our position, we're, we're thinking of a year down the line, but also three, five, 10, what's going to sustain growth or what's going to sustain enough money to let us like enjoy the lifestyle that we have right now. So what you're doing right now is, are all these things, things that you like truly believe in, or are they a mixture of shit that you're like, I'm not, I don't really know, but like. You no, know, it might be popular, it might not yeah. be. Are you just experimenting? No, I, I think that these things have been proven out. Mr. Beast Burger, I mean, Barstool got purchased because they do sports betting content. Mm -hmm. We know how important the next gen of college kids is. So I think we need to scale them. We probably need a bigger team to support those types of things. But I would bet on each of them being successful categorically. It, now, is it going to come from snapback? I don't know. Who's to say that? I never, my biggest problem as a business owner or starter would be I never really thought this would come to anything like like this like originally it was just a snapchat account that we would post like some you didn't, memes of so you didn't think about I had nothing no future plans oh I knew it and I knew yeah, it you from knew, when I started no, no, there was not knew. a fucking doubt in and, my mind and you need to know today yeah and so when we incorporated this year it kind of changed the mindset when we we hired our first employees. It changed the mindset. And they probably looked at me being like, hey, you, you got to think about this 3, 5, 10, 20 years down the road like you are. Um, but I just kind of, I go day by day. Obviously, we plant. But, like, I've never, ever in my life thought further than a year out. Interesting. Which is probably not a great strategy. No, but it's, it's I guess fine. I guess what I think long term about, we launched Snapback Agency, which reps digital creators. And mm -hmm. that's, like, digital creators of the future of the earth um fuck big media <laughs> and and so we're we're stamped there um that's but that's not even like snapback sports my day-to-day -day. alex runs that 
But yeah, I got to think, I guess, a little deep. I mean, a lot of it is just like a feeling thing. If I, I, I don't really execute on like multiple year plans. Right. It's more just like, what do I want to be doing, you know, when I wake up? And so when I look at BDG, like we're a sports media brand, but when I look at myself, I'm like, this is what I would like to be doing yeah. in five or 10 years. But do you want to run a business or create content? Because I think I think perfect example of this is Barstool. They've done a really nice job of separating church and state. Erica is the CEO. She runs the business. Obviously, Dave does a great job running the business. But he is content, he's personality, and he's audience. And I have always been entrepreneurial. I never understood the difference until I was there. I'm probably more interested in running a business than I am actually creating content. But I know that creating content like this will help me as a business business leader what do you think you're at yeah I, I uh it's a good example because like the president was obviously like super aware he's like I just want to you know I, like I'm still the president but like we need someone to run this shit yeah uh, I, I don't really know where I stand on that right now I love both aspects of it I think if I was like had to go 51 49 the 51 would definitely be in the creation space yeah I think that's what like gives me energy day in and day out there's a lot of stuff that comes along with the business side of things that's like not enjoyable I do think because I've had my hand in every aspect of like what we've built so far that it would feel weird to just completely outsource it. Like it, it's it's weird from a creator standpoint because you kind of feel like you are uh, affecting even it, it, something as black and white as like accounting or this or whatever. It's like yeah. the conversations I have with these people I feel like are actually driving the way my business operates. So it's like I don't I don't want to completely outsource everything, but. Long term, if I had to choose one way or the other, it would definitely be more towards the, the content side of things. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I think what I would maybe do is like content, but then if I wanted to run other businesses, maybe there are like other things I'm passionate about. Like, oh, let's let's let me try to like play the the CEO or like business role for like a tequila brand or right, you yeah. know something you yeah. know maybe not a tequila brand that's like way too scaled up, but like <laughs> you know what I mean. So yeah, it's an interesting thought. I also think it's tough to look at that before you've really hit scale because you don't know what that entails like you're going to make so many mistakes and you're going to grow so much between like now and when i have to make that decision in 12 years or some yeah. shit like that so i try not to think of it that way i just kind of feel like what drives me each day and like how do i scale that you know and for me it's like getting this studio so right now we have this is just like the podcast room that we're recording in but we rented an office space out here in manhattan our first day was march 1st so we've been in here for a little over six months right now we have uh one two three four five five people basically six people full-time we have a developer who's not actually um salary but he's like contract full-time pretty much and the idea behind it is obviously getting people together is like, you know, the most important thing when it comes to content and bringing that energy together. And that's what I like. Like, I love having you come in. I love having other people that I'm like friends with in my yeah. network come in and kind of, you know, whether it's create with us or just be around the same atmosphere. And like, that is my, that's my North star as a person, you know, I don't know what that means for BG to yeah. be completely honest with you. Does that mean me like stepping away 10 years from now to let a sports media brand like do its fucking thing? Yeah. Maybe. I don't really know. But for me, I like the idea of taking this, what we're doing doing in here, making it really big and just like, like, what else do you need? If every day I come in, I'm like, this is fucking awesome. If like 10 years from now, Sony's like, we'll put, we'll pay for all your equipment, your cameras, your lighting, your podcast, all this shit. And we'll pay the rent on the studio. Like what expenses do I need besides that? You know, that, that would make me a happy fucking man. So I, I don't know. I, I, I guess in my mind, I play the game between, should I try to blow this thing out as big as we possibly can? Should I just like be happy and be like, cool, you know, like it's a, it's a weird, it's That's a fine what, line. So I talked to the guys at House of Highlights. So if you don't know, House of Highlights origin story, Omar Raja, who play, uh, Omar Raja, who is now at Sports Center or ESPN. He started it, small account. They became, got acquired by Bleacher, became a small team. We talked to the original kind of core of the team and they said, when it's five of you, that's it. That's the top. Yeah. Of course, you you know you scale the team, grow the team. You got sales, advertising, more content, create all that stuff. It's great. You're worth ten times more. But like the fun part is right now. I think about that all the time. I'm like, dude, even on days where it's like boring and like uh, in here. In five years from now, we're going to look back and be like, yeah, that first place was crazy. Crazy. Like, it was so this much is fun. Crazy. This is so much fun. You guys guess someone's fucking lunch yeah. for <laughs> content. Like, yeah. you're, you know, in the future, right? Like, if you said, I want to build this business, scale it, raise money on it, you'd have to have sponsorships for that already. You'd mm -hmm. have to, you know, kind of ruin the, the integrity of the show a little bit. We got uh, no fucking integrity. As <laughs> it is, but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, all right, so I think a good conversation off of what you're talking about, content versus kind of leading a business is also a niche 
like you said, I'm touching the general sports fan. You're touching fantasy football, but then you add Ike's Lunch, and now you're creating different content around that. What's your take on, like, content creators? Because the advice right now, I think, is pick a niche and hit it hard. Yes, I, I think that's I think that's correct. I think picking a niche and then understanding... I mean, I, I think the cycle is the same for every fucking person or any creator that wants to scale. Just pick a niche, figure out how you deliver value, you pick a niche and then you're saying to yourself, okay, I can teach someone something about this niche, right? Like you're picking the niche because you know about it. Right. It's something that you've learned. It's something that you're passionate about and you're willing to learn about it. And then from there, you're like, what can I teach people about it, right? So you'll write down 10, 15, 30 different topic ideas and you have to figure out like, how am I good at delivering that value? If it's blog posts, if it's, you know, pictures that I'm good at designing, is it video getting on video? And then you figure out the platform. Like it's, it's very simple. Yeah. It's like, what is it? How do I deliver it? Where do I deliver it? And then you start building out the audience that's passionate about that. And then once you get scale, like you can monetize, you know, whatever anything, it is, anything, 5,000 people, 10,000 people, you get a product that's cost $30. Like I was, I was almost, um, full time on YouTube by the time I had probably seven to 8,000 subscribers on yeah. there by selling a $30 product plus a couple like affiliate brand deals or whatever. Anyone could do that. Mm -hmm. It depends. Like it's very, um, subjective to where you want to go. You and wanna, by the way, when you say anyone could do that, I think some people probably roll their eyes and are like, oh, it's so easy, whatever. That's the point of this is we're going to kind of help guide people to that. It's not going to be a step-by-step -step course. You're going to have to do a little bit of this stuff on your own, do your own research, but anyone can do it. And, and Gary Vee, who we both follow, like he's been talking about this for years. Like years. you like Star Wars, you can make a living off that. 100%. You like uh, fucking, I don't know, Beanie Babies, you can make a living off that. I, I believe if anyone's like passionate about a certain topic, like you could, I would say within two years, yeah. I would say within two years, you could be making 50K. And and there's not even a an amount in the category, right? Like you would think, oh, someone's already got Star Wars covered. They're there's what nine thousand fantasy football analysts right now. Yeah, there's, it's there's the most the, yeah, filled probably field ten I've ever times. Seen. That. Yeah, it's actually like the most saturated fucking thing in the world. Yeah. You just have to understand where you need to be delivering, like where the eyeballs are. Right? It's like for us, it's YouTube, it's TikTok. But I think once you understand like where you need to be delivering it to, it's just a matter of showing up and being consistent, and making sure you're actually delivering value. I think a yeah. lot of the problems are like people, especially in New York City, all like the influencers in New York City just want to be like, oh, here's my life. <laughs> like that's not valuable. No one yeah. gives a fuck. You know what I mean? Like if you're really, really hot, maybe you'll catch on. There'll be like people following you and stuff. Yeah. Most people think they're value. Most people are like, oh, me and my friends just started a podcast. Like, no, you shouldn't. You're probably not really that funny. The best way I think in today's world is to find information that you can give to people about a topic that you're really passionate about. Slowly grow an audience and slowly monetize it. Yep. And then in the exact same way that, you know, you talk about the Paul brothers, they're monetizing a million different things now. Yep. You don't have to be the same person that you started, like the topic that you started talking about originally, you could talk about anything you want. I could talk about business. You could talk about chicken fingers. <laughs> Anyone could talk about anything, but it, it takes, you know, a little bit more time to build that audience up again. But that's, that's why I asked you, where would you start? Because I agree, go, go to a niche because you got to hit, there's 1% who's attractive enough. It doesn't matter what content there's 1% who's funny. The other 98% deliver that value, pick your niche, grow your audience. But I think the longevity of creators, and we talk about this with the creators in our agency and something that we're both conscious of is the longevity and people aren't going to you're not going to be the hot thing in trick shots forever you're not going to be the hot thing in basketball impressions forever so you better start to infiltrate your own content and build your character and build your personality and there's no better way to do that than collaborating and big media <laughs> won't let you collaborate seriously like Bars. pat mcafee right mm -hmm. it's crazy that espn is giving him the platform normally they wouldn't do that he's a special kid case but normally like if you're working at fox sports you can't go do a, a piece on espn that's what i like about where our companies are is like my biggest sponsor is underdog your biggest sponsor is prize picks but like we're still free to collaborate for those of y'all out there that don't really understand the inner workings those are like the two fastest the two growing companies in the dfs yeah. space that are just absolutely competing against yeah. each other. And we won't do, I won't like go on prize pick stuff and he won't do underdog stuff. But I just think like where our companies are at, we see the value and I'm not nervous that 
if I post and tag you, that someone's going to unfollow me and follow you. It's like right? an insane thing to that, do. But that was the original thought process is like market share. The market's fucking huge. It's the market enormous. Is huge. It's growing so quickly. And it almost goes to the to the point of those companies' products. They're also niche. You know what I mean? Like they're also yeah. like very hammered down to where, and I've used this example before, but it's like, it's like, okay, you wanted to go work out 40 years ago. You had like two options. You yeah. can do bicep curls or you can, <laughs> or you can go for a run. Now you want to work out. Like you could do that still, but you could do hit workouts. You could do fucking goat yoga. Oh you could God. do, you know, you could do eight bajillion. Even bicep curl. You, right, could, you could do 10 different. You could be a forms. bicep curl creator. <laughs> Literally how to get bigger biceps. <laughs> you could create on all the different workouts. I'm sure there's 4 million of them. Mm -hmm. You could talk about what sport improves your biceps, makes them more lean. Then you could sell classes. Then you could sell in-person workout like the monetization options are insane but the collaboration options i think like if if i'm doing biceps would think you, oh you i don't do want to you collaborate with a tricep guy or another bicep person yeah. like you could do a dual thing <laughs> this is an insane fucking <laughs> path right this now. is your future right <laughs> here is bicep curls yeah no dude but that's how i think about like the fantasy space and the sports media space is like this is how fantasy started with like season long was like one thing that you right. did. And now it's like, you know, DFS got popular and the best ball got popular and Dynasty is popular. And now like that there's a million yeah. different parlay, the player, you know, like a million different like versions of that. That will happen with every single industry. Yeah. Every single industry will start with one or two popular key pillars and will filter down. Don't enter a pillar because you think it's going to be popular. But if you find yourself passionate about a pillar within an industry that's becoming popular, you nail the fuck out of that. Well, what do you think about that? Because that is something that I think new business owners, and when you're being a creator, you got to think of yourself as a business owner, entrepreneurial, which I think will shift over time. You wouldn't start a product if you were like that business is too saturated or too competitive or I couldn't compete. So is there a world where you're like, actually, I might be super behind on fantasy football or something. Maybe See, I should create best ball content. It's, it's not about the content or the product. It's about your just the, where you're putting it. Right. Cause here, here's the way okay. I look at it. Like when I started, right, there was probably four or five YouTube channels doing fantasy stuff, which gave me the easy path yes. to grow. Right. And I don't, I consider myself lucky, but I don't because I know how much work goes into it because every Every person uh, where what I did, everyone who was popular before me got it through blogging, podcasting and Twitter. I know there are probably a total of maybe like five or six fantasy football YouTube accounts, maybe you know, six, seven, whatever that have over 100,000 subscribers right now. I could personally name like eight of my friends within the industry that over the last like six to 12 months have about 100,000 uh, followers on TikTok. It's literally just, it's, yeah. you could do the same content, just know where to put it, right? Like if I was telling anyone to start in the fantasy space right now, and I've been telling them for like the last two years, I was like, like, don't waste your time on YouTube. Yeah. Go to TikTok. Yeah. You will grow 50 times faster. So, what about YouTube shorts? Uh, YouTube shorts are fine. My personal, I know I've heard a lot of like headlines about how like they're awesome and the yeah. next thing. We haven't, I mean, we've put out a bunch of YouTube shorts. I haven't really seen, um, I, if you're getting started, I guess YouTube shorts can be really, really good. Yeah. Us personally, because we already have the platform for our like long form videos. I haven't seen them really perform better or even as good they as seem our to be videos. different algorithms like our youtube shorts are popping off we've gained a hundred thousand subscribers in the last three months really yeah oh amazing but yeah it's crazy but our youtube videos don't do anything i mean a little bit and we don't create many youtube videos uh so that's probably part of it we should put way more attention and you guys got if, 100k in the last if, three months god if damn nick yeah. subscribed to our youtube but but no this chance. is the thing no chance we'll talk about vanity metrics i'm sure in future episodes like I'd rather have the 10,000 that Pete Overzet has, like a super engaged niche audience who watches 200 live. If we go live, we're like 50 people at most live. Mm -hmm. We don't YouTube, put enough it, attention into it, but shorts. YouTube I shorts think, is fucking weird, bro. Yeah. Because I, it, it feels there are two different worlds. Yes. There's two different worlds, and it's like YouTube really didn't create the separation. You know what would be incredible if YouTube just made a secondary app? And it was just a YouTube Shorts app. And it basically operated like TikTok. Right. I would be really excited about putting YouTube Shorts up in there. Do you watch Shorts? No, almost yeah, never. I don't watch it. Either. I don't really ever go on the YouTube app, to be completely honest with you, outside of like when we're posting right. our shit. But you can watch Shorts on desktop, right? 
Yeah, you should be able yeah. to. They just pop up like they're we- it's weirdly done, yeah. I guess, you know? It's just like not native to what this is. So I feel like if they had just created a, a secondary app for it and then that would allow the same viral growth that TikTok has and yeah. creators would be fucking moving over there, but there's just like an innate weirdness about the way that they just smush together these vertical and horizontal videos and I'm even like personally like I don't want those weird things just like in the middle of all yeah, my other yeah. videos. You and, want thumbnails. You yeah. want the good thumbnails, titling, the It feels like blind. spammy, scammy and it's, I know it's yeah. Not, but yeah. it's just like it's no that that's how i feel like we're not creating original content doing it we're just republishing content and it's growing but it's like we need to turn it into something um but yeah the platforms evolve like crazy over time they do and it, it, it's really not that difficult to like understand how, how do you stay on top of that shit because obviously like with i us, use the platform we're doing them every day yeah. yeah i listen to do you listen to podcasts i don't Really? I do not listen to podcasts. I don't travel. I mean, I'm traveling now every Monday uh, and Tuesday, but I don't know. I don't love podcasts. I've been listening to a couple, like trying them out, but I feel like social clips are now the new podcast. Like I haven't listened to part of my take really ever, but I feel like I know what's going on in that More so podcast. like educational, yeah. I guess I was I, talking I about. I used to listen to audiobooks. Um, I'll go through phases with that stuff. But you ever had a real job? Yes. I've had, I've had a couple real Not jobs. Not like fucking busboy, Domino's type shit. No, no. My first job was at Action Network. Okay. So sports gambling, media company. Uh, they're owned by Churnin. They recently sold. Um, but at the time, Churnin owned both Barstool and Action. There was supposed to be a little cross-collaboration. And Barstool actually saw Action as a competitor. So they didn't work together. Rovell came probably a year after I was there. They were writing articles, crushing the SEO, dominating that world with the app. And I was like, guys, everything is on social media. Every single thing. And all we would do is do GIFs and little captions like Hawaii minus six. Oh, my God. Yeah. Fire you know? emojis. Like we, we wrote the book on gambling Twitter, which all the accounts still use today. Now the worst book kinda, ever written. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The <laughs> dumbest, cheapest, easiest book yeah. ever written. But we did no video content. Now they're doing video. They've invested in TikTok and Instagram reels and stuff like that. Uh, so I left there. I worked at Whistle Sports. Whistle is what. So you've me. always been in like the sports media space. Always. Okay. And I always knew I wanted to be in the sports media space. Um, but at Whistle, I learned how to be a creator there because they were working with creators. They forced me to go on camera and stuff like that. I like I, most people don't know this. I grew up with alopecia, so I didn't have hair. I didn't. I barely had eyebrows and stuff like that. If you had asked me or anyone who knew me ten years ago, would never have stepped in front of a camera. Like barely like speaking out. I played sports and I like talking about sports, and so, so that shit just goes away. Yeah, uh, Rogan uh, being no, a motherfucker. I, Rogaine, uh, we did. Wait, actually? Pills. Just, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, conditioner, shampoo, uh, Chinese chi pills, like some made-up shit that some This is for said. real. We tried everything. Shots in the, in the scalp. Nothing worked. And then I went to college. I got some sun. You got I, laid. My parents <laughs> think, like, I got laid. And, like, my hair started growing back. And so, yeah, you can't tell today. But I think Whistle really helped me grow out of that. And that's like, I see people in my circle who are testing out content for the first time. And I sometimes Snap does a good job of like pulling up memories. I watch some of the first videos I did on Snapback. It literally sounds like this. Okay, guys, we're doing a giveaway today. Like I was terrible. Is that the cringiest shit? Cringy. But like, that's what it looked like. And now I'm five years later and I've been repped four million times. So just do it in front of your mirror. Do it a billion times. I do believe like at least on platforms like TikTok and low filtered platforms where you can just test and try shit like just post everything. You never know. It also creates a nice little catalog that you can look back on and use in content. So yeah. if you're not cringing at the first couple things that you fucking put up yeah. in, then I don't believe you put anything up. No, if you're not cringing at the first couple of things, then you're a fucking loser because what have you been doing? Like if you're a natural right away, like quit your job <laughs> and go like go to Hollywood and dominate. But sure. yeah, I, I would say the early days, like you'll be objectively terrible, at, at least in the video world but probably writing too like i can't write for shit yeah um i had a bunch of full-time jobs before i finally left and like pursued this as my full-time thing but i i had built up a lot of momentum building youtube yeah and i got to the point where i was probably making like 40 ish you know 40k on the side and was like okay by next summer when we 
continue to grow, like I'll be good on right. my own. And I was like, okay, as long as I can make enough to like supplement my salary, that's it. I'm good. Like, that's I'm, the peak. By I'm the way. happy. I know. One hundred thousand dollars. It takes about three hundred thirty-three dollars a day to get there. That was all. Now with inflation in New York, I don't know if that makes it. Oh, but no. I I that was. All every day at Action Network, I would calculate like I would get a deal for like two hundred bucks to post something. I'd be like, all right, if I could get one of these every day and then get something. That's so crazy. That's all. Now it's like we'll sign a hundred thousand dollar deal for. Well, that's it. I've like, been thinking about this more and more, and dude, like I've I've been trying so hard over the years to hone in on the things that I just don't want to spend energy on. Right. And right now, it's like we work with some smaller brands where like the deals are not as lucrative. They're not nothing. Like they're not yeah. they're not dollars I should throw away. But at the same time, I love the model that we have right now, where it's like fi- sign one or two yes. fat deals and then just you know be like legitimate partners with those companies for the next whatever the deal is a year two years like that and you don't feel the pressure from like because right now affiliate link and and this was something i believed in forever is that you were going to have to drive true audience that wasn't the case like instagram models they couldn't drive shit they drive no in-person action they drive no affiliate sales they were still getting the money now the market is pulled back now money is tighter and and companies that can actually deliver value because they've been doing that their followers are kind of delivering for them yeah and we have so we're like our, our big deals with prize picks we also just signed with this company called mojo who's like the sports stock market and those are like our two big players for this year but we're yeah. also signed with like a few other random ones like the felix grays and the truffs and some other like lifestyle brands and manscape whatever and sometimes i'm just like damn like it, it's it's hard to stay on top of all this right yes. it's like why would i plug this brand for like this much money when I could just plug our own products or like this bigger brand that we're doing. And it's like, it just scatters my brain in other places. And for me, that was like difficult from a sponsorship standpoint. I'm thinking about this a lot for the future. I'm like, next year, I think we might take one, maybe two big deals and like no other, I don't want a thousand dollar check here, a thousand dollar check here. Give me the big one. Let me focus. And for me, content was the same thing because I was doing a lot of content that I knew was like good for what we're doing, but I didn't personally enjoy it. So I was like, okay, let me look at the similar characteristics between all the things I'm doing that I don't enjoy and just cut them out. So there was a point where like I, my first apartment I got in Manhattan was in Hell's Kitchen. It was a duplex. It was a big motherfucker. And I was like, okay, I, uh, my mindset getting it was like, this will be our first office. This will be the first beta of what we're going to do. And people will come in. We, we did, um, live internship interviews. I remember on YouTube, we had these kids come on for like 40 minutes and I fucking ripped them through these, through the interviews. (laughs) We hired two of them. And then COVID hit as soon as we moved into hell's kitchen and nobody can come for like the first four or five months. So that went like down the drain immediately. We were doing all this content through like zoom calls. And I was like, this is just, this is energy draining to me rather than like giving me energy. And I was like, those kind of pieces of content were things that I did like three times a week. And I'm like, I'm cutting that out. And as I've evolved as like a, as I guess a a content creator, like you just need to start refining the things. And this is, I guess, a deeper conversation for like down the road that people are a little bit more like foundationalized, but you, you continue to like refine things that you do and don't like. And that's how you, I think, perfect your craft a little bit. Like you learn what you do and don't by just doing things and taking shit that doesn't energize you and throwing them out the window. Did you get the new iPhone? No. It looks like it, the blue one. This is the 13. They just released the 14, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, this is the 13. Although my speaker down here is dead, and every time I try to make content with it, I'm like, it sounds like an alien. <laughs> you got to upgrade. Yeah, I get the upgrade every time now. A nice tax write-off. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to figure out some taxes this morning, actually. Yeah, that that's the stuff where, especially as a content creator, um, taxes, hiring, payroll, legal, trying to think all the things that I've been trying to figure out. That's energy draining for me. That's like, I tough. like vision. I like strategy. I like figuring out, problem solving, working with brand, all that stuff. That stuff is draining. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of torn on that. Like, I, I don't like it, but I like knowing it, right. you know, because yeah. it's almost like even when you first started, your first e-commerce site, what yeah. platform was that on? Shopify. Did you create it? I didn't. Okay, you didn't. Uh, well, the first, oh yeah, the very first one, yes. And I would adjust like little right. things Tinkering on the it. menu. Yeah. Like- and, and that's my biggest advice I give out in life is start your own thing. You got to do it. Because if you, like this podcast, right? 
we've gotten to the place where I thankfully, because I hate it, I don't have to edit this. I don't have to edit, caption, any of that stuff. Don't worry about it. Yeah, Nick <laughs> pays people to do that. <laughs> I'm just here. But, that's but, like, but, but also on that point, like, I will have my employees use some of their hours to edit this shit. Not This isn't not going to make us a single fucking dollar, right. but I love this shit. Yeah. Like, this is fun to ask conversation And it's for brand me. building. And, and, like, honestly, even if we didn't have the camera on, the camera is kind of an excuse for me right now to, like, sharpen myself and learn stuff from you. But I don't have to edit it. But I did edit my first podcast, and what I learned was not only how to edit, but the hosting platform, what getting my first deal, you know, my ad read in there, dynamic versus I don't even know what the other word is for it. Programmatic. Yeah, programmatic. Uh, you know, we use Anchor, like how to cut a social clip, how to make it for TikTok versus Twitter. Like just by doing it, if people say I'm going to start a podcast, they don't understand. You're going to learn 14 different skills from that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say like just go do it. And then if you get good enough at it, and you do make a dollar off it, hopefully someone can do it for Well, that's, that's the cool part about being, like, I don't think you can get to the place that we're at unless you've done it, because, like, when you are outsourcing things, I think <clears throat> there's something to be said for, like, knowing how to do the things that you're telling other people to do, you know? Because it's like, you know what you're looking for. And I, I like, our first e-commerce site fucking nine years ago or whatever, it's like, yeah, I built that on Shopify. Yeah. I had to learn the difference between, like, uh, wordpress.com versus wordpress.org and like every <laughs> small creator is like what the fuck is this yeah. one's like a hosting site one's just like a free platform and you go through all of these things man and it's just like you come out the other side and you're like oh this sucks but you're like I'm refined as fuck right yeah. now. You know what I mean? It's like people that are my age that haven't done this don't really understand what it takes to get here. And you become like a more well-rounded person as well. And it's easier to help people out. Well, I was going to say, you understand how long an edit's going to take because you, you've done it yourself. Yeah. And so even you're more understanding, it makes you a better boss. You just learn so much from, from doing it. I think that's definitely the piece of advice too. It, here's the thing when it comes down to it, like not just consecration or business, like the only way you learn in life is from mistakes. Yeah. Right. So like, why would you even want people to tell you what not to do? Because then you're not, there's like a thing in your brain that doesn't actually like trigger. It doesn't actually work. It doesn't actually like teach you a lesson unless you fucked it up and you're like, oh, this actually like affected my life. I can't yeah. do this again, you know? And that goes with all the stuff that we're talking about. That goes with the content creation, especially, but um, where are we at right now? We're at 40. I want to say we want questions from people because I'm a big believer in like, we could talk all day. We could create a show script and notes. We won't, but we could. Mm -hmm. Uh, but really trying to help others like understand this stuff specifically. We could talk for four hours on Mr. Beast Burger. <laughs> we could talk for four hours on the general creator economy. We could talk for two minutes. So help us kind of shape the show and what you guys want to hear. But I don't know if we're experts in the industry. I don't know. Do you consider yourself an act? I think I have a little imposter syndrome. Like um, if, if people always are like con congratulating me, like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like I really don't think it's like that crazy but I, I don't know if I'm an expert but I know I've experienced a fuck ton of shit yeah I, I think that's probably it too I, I'd say like we fucked up enough that yeah. like we fucked up way more <laughs> than everybody else yeah so yeah I, I think um I don't like the word like expert only because it's so weirdly overused in like the fantasy football community yeah. like I would never ever be like I'm a fantasy expert you're not but when yeah for sure definitely. <laughs> not even close that's why I don't consider it but when it comes to like content creation, but running a business, absolutely not. There's a million things right, that I don't right. know. But when it comes to the creator economy, yeah. we're definitely, I feel confident that I can kind of go toe to toe with 99% of creators outside of like the big, the yeah. big, big ones, you know? And, and you asked like, how do you stay in tune with this stuff is we live it. Yeah. Like got the agency. I read the articles, not podcasts. I follow this stuff like on TikTok and Twitter. Like I know who the up and coming creators are. I know how they're monetizing. So I just say like, I'm even snapback in general. We don't do a ton of original content. You guys are now getting into that space uh, and doing really well with it. But like aggregation makes me feel like I see everything. So at least I can share that and a little bit of my personal experience on that. But I don't know. Yeah, I mean, listen, this will get more and more refined. We obviously just wanted to give you like an introduction into us. Uh, the, the goal for this is just to be like the most transparent podcast when it comes to the creator economy and share the the path that we've taken thus far, whether it, um, whether it dives into the numbers of like follower accounts, subscribers, monetization, revenue, all those types of things we hope to kind of like unveil as the episodes go by. So some episodes, like you said, might be like specific to one category. We might just rip for like 30 minutes. Others might just be full Q and A. Others yeah. might be very general kind of talk. So we'll find the direction as we go, as with fucking anything in life and any 
content that you uh, typically make. But yeah, we have the Discord down below. If you want to drop some Q&A for us for next time around, uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Until then. What is, the, you got to say, the YouTube channel? Oh, big content. I figure if they're watching this, it's on YouTube, but I guess we're going to be ripping clips. Will it Will it be a podcast? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Okay, so they might be listening. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm not that good at this content thing, <laughs> he apparently. He sucks at content Shit. distribution. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, so we are big content and uh, fuck, fuck big, big media. media. <laughs> I can't believe we ripped that perfectly like four <laughs> times.